The birthplace of country music, the home to the Tennessee Titans, the so-called Athens of the South, this is Nashville, Tennessee. From the heydays of country, from Elvis Presley to Dolly Parton, Nashville has slowly but surely blossomed into a massive and upcoming powerhouse town. But all good things don't always last. Once upon a time in Nashville lay the glorious, gone, but not forgotten theme park of the past, Opryland, USA. It all began with a local Nashville life and accident insurance company, then owners of the Opry radio show, President Irving Wall, who needed a new location for the always crowded Grand Ole Opry, with performances happening at least twice a week in the old Ryman Auditorium. Inspired by a trip to Six Flags Astroworld in the late 1960s, Wall saw business opportunity. Astroworld was open inside the Astro Domain, a massive stadium for sporting events and concerts. Operating when the stadium would be otherwise closed, Wall believed that a Nashville theme park attraction would work great when the Grand Ole Opry was closed and open for that matter. After returning home, Wall and company made business and financial agreements to ensure the project happened, making the announcement for a theme park on October 13, 1969. Opryland USA was officially opened on the 27th of May, 1972. The name of the park was inspired by local WSM radio disc jockey Grant Turner's early show, Opryland USA. The theming of the park itself is inspired by country music, but also with the tagline of Home of American Music. The park focused on the core of all genres, including nine total park areas which features a motif centered on various types of a, from that of country, to gospel, to rock, and more in between. Similar to other theme parks you've explored, Opryland USA was not at first focusing on rides for guests, but rather concentration on musical productions. The park was even billed as a show park, and not an amusement park or theme park in its early days. This, however, did not stay the course for too long. For throughout the 1970s, the park would add attractions such as Timber Topper, later Rock and Roller Coaster, and Flume Zoom, a water-based log flume ride. In the fourth season of operation in 1975, Opryland expanded for the first time. The State Fair area was constructed, which included Carnival Games, the Wabash Cannonball Roller Coaster, and the Tennessee Waltz Swing. Irving Wall's plan for Opryland USA had certainly become a major success. By the 1977 season, the park was drawing nearly 2 million guests a season. Opryland was able to capitalize on this success, in part because of the geographical location of Nashville. For at the time, other prominent theme parks were hours away in places such as Kings Island in Ohio and Six Flags St. Louis in Missouri. Attendance and attention to the park would continue to grow rapidly throughout the remainder of the decade. So much so that 1977, on top of record attendance, the Opryland Hotel and Resort was opened right next door to the park. Two years later, in 1979, Opryland USA would add the Roy Cuff Theater, which would now house the ever-growing and stable of the park's musical productions. As the 1970s paved the way for the 1980s, the park would continue to do extraordinarily well. The new decade was here, and in 1980, Opryland USA would see an ownership change. After a three-year back and forth of multiple different buyers and sellers, Gaylord Broadcasting Company of Oklahoma City would purchase the park, the hotel, and other bundled business interests for a combined $250 million in 1983. The company would hold onto the park for over a decade, beginning in 1984 with expansion in mind. The Screamin' Delta Demon, a bobsled roller coaster, would open in the New Orleans Jazz area of the park. One year later, Trickets, or a three-day ticket system, would be introduced to entice incoming guests to purchase three-day admission tickets to stay and play in the surrounding national area. This continued success saw Opryland hit even bigger achievements in attendance and local attention. However, starting in the mid to late 1980s and early 90s, the park would officially enter a competition with multiple closer theme parks. 
In 1986, Tennessee native and Opryland star Dolly Parton would officially open Dollywood, just a few hours away in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. In addition, Kentucky Kingdom would open in Louisville, Kentucky, one year later in 1987. With two parks now in much closer proximity, Opryland USA, for the first time in its park's history, would see an attendance decline. In response, the ticketing system was changed again, trying to convince out-of-state visitors to combine tickets to the park, stays at the Opryland Hotel, and admission to the Grand Ole Opry would be marketed throughout the region. Throughout the remaining time of the 1980s and into the 1990s, Gaylord Entertainment would continue to pump money into the park and guest experience, adding such rides as the General Jackson Showboat and the famous indoor steel roller coaster, Chaos, of the mid-1990s. To continue to try and distinguish itself from the competition, the park would go on to attract top country music stars at the time to come and perform every night of seasonal operation. In addition, by 1993, the hit family game show, Family Feud, would travel to Opryland, attracting a live television audience. As the mid to late 1990s approached, the park would still see regular attendance, and had now become a consistent part of the Nashville scene. However, the greatest of country music stars have a bad album or songs every once in a while. Despite the decades-long history of the park, Opryland operated seasonally, given the location. This caused the park to be somewhat handicapped, given the location a triangular-shaped piece of land with a Cumberland River on one side. The park eventually ran out of room for reasonable expansion, in addition from suffering occasional seasonal flooding. As consumers of theme parks interest shifted in the 1990s, the park would suffer from the inability to add very much more to the park without having to tear down an already existing attraction. By 1994, the park was forced to remove fan favorite rides such as Tin Lizzie's and Raft Ride to make room for the Hangman, an inverted roller coaster which would open in 1995. The following year, in 1996, owners of the park, Gaylord Entertainment would open the Delta, which was the largest construction project in the Nashville area at the time. The Delta featured over 1,000 guest rooms and a new convention complex to the Opryland Hotel. This move by the company would now completely stop Opryland USA from ever expanding again, as the property for the park was now completely taken up. Given the climate of the Nashville area, it was impossible for the park to remain open year-round, which hindered Gaylord Entertainment from ever creating consistent and returning workforce, running into many labor shortages for the park in the mid to late 1990s. Alongside this, and the Gaylord Entertainment wanting a new corporate direction, rumors began to circulate about the future of the park in summer of 1997. That same year, the annual Christmas in the Park season was billed as a last chance for fans to see Opryland USA. With this announcement, Gaylord Entertainment officially closed the park for good on the 31st of December, 1997. In short, Opryland USA was a very successful seasonal theme park. Competition had grown, however Opryland usually always responded. The closing of the park is a confusing business decision. It was later announced in 1998 that a major new Opry Mills Mall project would open in May of 2000. The entirety of the park would be demolished to make way for the mall in July 1999. Despite this asinine business decision, Gaylord Entertainment would go on to sell a handful of fan favorite rides within Opryland USA to other surrounding theme parks. The Hangman roller coaster would be sold and relocated to Six Flags Marine World, Chaos would be sold to Old Indiana Fun and Water Park, however would never operate. The rich history and ultimate legacy of Opryland USA still stands tall, as the Grand Ole Opry music experience is still around. In the end, the park suffered from location, competition, and head-scratching upper management decisions. Despite this, millions were still able to experience, and I remember what was the great, Opryland USA. With over 20 years of bad press since the park's closure and poor investment returns in the Opry Mills Mall, Gaylord Entertainment would admit in 2004 that the closing of the park was a bad idea. The company announced a partnership between Dollywood parent company Hershend Family Entertainment for a year-round theme park in the Nashville area, which would be a water park in the summer and a snow park in the winter, with an expected opening date to be 2014. However, Dolly Parton and Hirschland would back out of the deal, signing Gaylord's decision to sell the rights to operate its hotel chain to Marriott International. The project venture would later be scrapped that same year. In summer of 2022, a development real estate and investment firm based in Nashville announced a brand new theme park for all ages which would begin construction in 2022, with a planned opening in 2025. The park will be known as Storyville Gardens.